Good morning. Welcome back to Why in the Morning Y254 channel. My name is Joy Mochache. You can find me on Twitter on Joy underscore Mochache. This is Entrepreneurship Tuesday. Remember, if you want to reach out to us, you can do so. Remember that the hashtags you have to use are hashtag Entrepreneurship Tuesday and hashtag Why in the Morning. And please do so on our social media platforms. That's on Facebook and on Twitter. You can find us on Y254 channel. On Instagram, you can find us on Y254 underscore channel. Uh, today, I've got authors on the set with us today. Authors, they're writers, they're coaches, they're all these wonderful things. And before I introduce them, there is a book in front of us which you had seen as we came in. And uh, we're going to be discussing a little bit about what's inside that book and who the author of that book is. If I can move now to introduce our, um, our guests. Karibu Sana, uh, this is Mrs. Tabitha Kihara. She's a director for Maple Brook Writers. She's also an author and she's a writing coach. And our other guest is Mr. Vincent Ogutu. He's a business coach and an author and as well as a mentor. Karibu Sana Tuwa in the morning. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome to uh, Tuesday Entrepreneurship. Thank you. Yeah, so those are many titles and all of them encompass around entrepreneurship, don't they? Mm. And so let me start off by asking Miss Tabitha Kiara. Can I just call you Tabitha for today? Yes. yes. <laughs> so Tabitha, I'm just wondering, as how long have you been interested in your passion as an author? Uh, I've been writing for a long time. Okay. Actually, my love for books started long time ago when I was little. Uh, growing up with a father who was an education officer encouraged us to keep reading and writing. Mm -hmm. So at an early age I was able to read the weekly review, uh, the Mose series, Fist for Kyun, mm -hmm. Nancy Drew, those series Nancy, that did time. You say Nancy Drew? Yes, I those days. Uh -huh. Yes, so I, I grew up loving to read books and uh, in 2012 I began writing. I began writing uh, journal papers, that is when I was pursuing my masters. And uh, journal, journal papers actually, you publish for conferences. Mm. Uh, that is a call, they're called call for papers. A call for paper uh, comes through, through a conference. A, call, a conference calls for the call for papers, so you send out your work and you send, if they like your work, they accept it, and then you get to publish it. So my niche for writing is technology. That's mm. my background. That's your I'm niche. a nighty person, and I also love family. So I write about family, children, marriages, and I also write about technology. I write about education, I write about e-health, I write about cloud computing, virtualization. So I've written, I've been writing from Basically, I'd say 2011. Mm -hmm. So I've published my work in international journals. I've traveled to Mauritius, to Uganda, Tanzania to present my work. So I love writing. Yes. All right. And Mr. Guto, how did your love and interest for writing and being an author begin? Mm, I'm sure. It young actually age. didn't start with the, the interest of being an author. Okay. It started by the love of uh, contributing towards the school magazine at Jamhuri High School. Ah, I was the features manager. Uh -huh. Unfortunately, uh, that journey uh, did not take long uh, because uh, I was very poor in grammar, although I really loved writing. So that forced me to uh, change mm -hmm. and focus in the sciences right. because I believed that nee, this grammar thing might bring a problem in future if I decided to follow uh, uh, my, the, the writing sages, the likes of Chinua Achebe, the likes mm. of uh, Ngogi Wadiongo, because I really love literature. I read most of the African writers when I was in secondary school. And uh, I didn't know, but I think uh, that seed of writing was planted then. Then um, it went through a period of uh, what we say uh, incubation where nothing was happening much. Mm -hmm. Then um, after graduating uh, with a degree in chemistry and uh, working for some time, I decided to go back to, to school. So I went for a master's course in entrepreneurship and uh, there was a lot of writing and that triggered uh, back the writing. And uh, I could write uh, term papers that were of uh, relatively very good quality and I actually published my thesis. Mm -hmm. And that triggered something in me. And I said, no, Vincent, uh, this writing thing is, uh, is cool. So uh, I, uh, I enrolled again for a PhD, and uh, I did a seminal paper. 
uh, that uh, I also published in the international journals. But meanwhile, I was writing my first book, uh, which was about uh, life. It's called Life is Like That. Uh, just to share with people uh, life challenges and how I have managed to overcome the many challenges that uh, right, I, right. I encountered in life. Okay. And uh, after the first book, the people who read my first book were telling me, Vincent, when are you writing another book? Oh, so yeah. I wrote another book. Uh -huh. After writing a second book, there are people who have consistently uh, advised me, Vincent, we are waiting for the next book. We are <laughs> waiting for the next book. And I think uh, I've been sold into writing. Nowadays, I write consistently. See. Daily? Uh -huh. Yes. Yeah, and we shall talk about the book that you've written oh, in yeah. just a little bit. Uh, sure. Let me go back to Mrs. Kihara Kidogo. Mrs. Kihara, yes. you are a, actually, you have a club, a writer's club that yes. is called Maple Brook Writer's Club. Yes. What is this club all about? And um, what are the kind of people that come through the, to this club? And can our youth be interested in something like that? Yes, thank you for this question. Maple Brook Writers is a writing club uh, where we have uh, both the young and also the elderly. Mm -hmm. uh, and we encourage each other to keep writing mm -hmm. because we know through writing we get to discover our purpose. We get to find healing through writing. Uh, we get to identify our talents. And it's also a source of, of income for some of us. So we actually encourage everyone to tell their story because we say the only story that you can tell and tell so well is your own story. And your own story will inspire somebody else because you, you are authentic and people want to hear from authentic people. They want to hear about your life and what you've gone through and what lessons have you learned. So in the club, we encourage each other to write. We motivate each other. We inspire each other. And we're always having book launches. It's amazing. It's yeah, amazing. it's amazing. It sounds like fun. Yeah, oh it's my fun. goodness. Yes. All right. And so yes. please, if there are any youth who are interested in joining um, Maple Brook Writers Club, please do feel free to do so. And I will ask you guys uh, at the end to maybe share how they can reach you in yes. um, whichever way possible towards the end. Mm -hmm. So please listen up for that. And remember, hashtag to, uh, Tuesday Entrepreneurship, hashtag why in the morning. Ah, let's get back to Mr. Vincent Ogutu. Mr. Yes. Vincent Ogutu, there's a beautiful book we have here on set, I can see. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm seeing something to do with millionaires on there. Billionaires. Billionaires. Yes. Can we please discuss the content of this book? Uh, this book is actually uh, the product of three years of research. Where, uh, having studied entrepreneurship at the higher levels, I became curious, how come there are a lot of dollar billionaires in Europe, Asia, and the Americas? Mm -hmm. And I was wondering, do we have these dollar billionaires in Africa? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, what is different uh, from the likes of Jack Ma and the billionaires that we have in Africa? So I started to study the billionaires one after another from their childhood up to where they are now and uh, what they have done. And I realized that uh, all the billionaires that we have from Africa, they have made their money by solving the problems we have in Africa. And that is the motivation behind, yes. They have made their money by solving the problems we have in Africa. Yes, mm. because when you look at the bigger problems that we have, they're actually not problems, they are opportunities. Right. Yes. Huh. So when you look at um, the population of Africa is estimated to be about 1.2 billion. Mm. If all these people uh, eat two meals a day, the farmers have a business. The restaurants have a business. Mm -hmm. So if you can tap into the supply chain, right. you will have a role to play, whether you are playing the transport role, whether you are playing the banker's role. Everybody has a role to play in solving the problems of the continent. The other problem in Africa is that um, it is estimated that, that if, uh, uh, over 50% over 60% over over of the population is below 35 years of age. 60% of Africa's population, population is, is below, below the age, age of 35. 35. Which means that these are able-bodied people. Yeah. Uh, they have quite a number of years yeah. in this world uh -huh. and they can actually work, mm -hmm. they can go to school, they can build houses, so they can play a role in solving the problems of the continent. Mm -hmm. I see. Yes. That's wonderful. And that's the content of this book. Yeah, the content of, uh, no, that, that's just one. 
if you take for example the person who started Celtel or Airtel then, uh, Mohammed Ibrahim, he's a, he's a Sudanese. And uh, he realized, having trained as a uh, telecommunications engineer, that Africa needs mobile telephony. Mm -hmm. People didn't believe him. He came into Africa, started Celtel, and he made all the billions. Celtel. Yes. yes. So the problems in Africa are actually opportunities. Right. You look at Aliko Dangote. Aliko Dangote mm -hmm. started by selling rice, beans, cooking oil, and sugar. He still does the same. On a higher scale. <laughs> yes, at a bigger scale. Yes. He's actually gone into value addition. Yeah. where He's now milling uh -huh. rice, supporting farmers, and changing Africa by creating jobs, creating opportunities. Okay. He's gone into cement and others. So every person who has succeeded in Africa has succeeded through solving the problems in Africa. Yes. And these stories are actually included in, in this book. book. Yes. And remember, you guys, if this is Tuesday Entrepreneurship and you're looking for some business ideas, please buy this book. There's a lot you can learn, and I think there's a lot of ideas that you can pick up. Mm. There are ah. actually 10 examples. Oh, 10 examples. Ten examples. Ah, hmm. Thank mm. you for that. And please, uh, can we go back to Ms. Tabitha? Mrs. Tabitha, wh what kind of books have you authored, and uh, what genre do they seem to take? Uh, I read non-fiction books. Those non are books, yeah, those are books that talk about real life experiences. So I've written a, bo a book about beauty of waiting. I, I wrote this book uh, because I wanted to inspire women, and not only women, m m uh, people generally, to be able to, to enjoy their seasons of waiting, to be able to know that even when you're waiting for something, you can be victorious and you can be fruitful. Because all of us are waiting. Life is about waiting. And I wrote it because um, I got married in 2009. And, in 20, and we decided uh, we were not going to get our baby in the first year of our marriage. So in the second year, we began trying for a baby. We didn't succeed the third year. The fourth year, we tried again. And this time, we succeeded and we, go, we conceived. But in the sixth week, we lost the pregnancy. And in the fifth year, we managed to get pregnant again and in the 12th week we lost the baby we got a miscarriage so our hearts were broken because how can your heart not break when you lose a baby but you know what broken hearts are what gives you compassion they lead you to your purpose and you get empathy for people and then in our sixth year of marriage we were blessed with a baby boy so I wrote this book to encourage people that even when you're going through your season of waiting, you know, you're waiting for that job or for that baby, what should you be doing? So these are lessons from my own life. When I was waiting, I went back to school to pursue my master's. I traveled, I love traveling. I went to Mauritius, I went to Tanzania, I went to Uganda, I went to Zanzibar. I traveled in Kenya, I went to the world life, you know, Savo. I mean, redeem time because you'll not always have it. And seasons come and seasons go. No season is permanent. So I wrote it to encourage people that even when you're waiting, don't be depressed. And writing is a way of finding healing. You know, when you write, you connect with yourself, you connect with your experience. So you begin to find healing. Because we say the universe will always react to what you're doing, the vibration you're sending out. The universe receives them and acts towards them. So when you begin writing, you find emotional healing. So for me, it's a way of telling people People. Even when you're going through a season of waiting, you can begin to write, you can begin to redeem time, you can begin to do the things that you've always wanted to do. You know, go back to school, buy that car, travel, you know, do whatever you, you want to do. Don't keep sympathizing and feeling sorry for yourself. So it's about my journey. Mm -hmm. And the second one is um, 40 weeks of pregnancy devotion. When I got pregnant, um, I began to journal my journey. So I would actually write, like for week one, what is happening in my body in week one. And then I would write uh, the experience, and then I would write a love letter to the unborn baby. So it's actually a general guide for mothers, for women who are pregnant, to be able to connect with the unborn baby, to pray for them, and to walk the journey, and also praying, praying about their pregnancy as they are walking through that journey. So I advise women who are pregnant to just walk, connect with their babies from that time when they conceive to getting the baby. So they are basically uh, books about my own journey. 
Yeah, they are real okay. authentic stories. And and um, before I go back to Mr. Ogutu, I'd like to cover, I'll ask you one more question because you've identified your niche as yes. nonfiction. Yes. Um, if we have an interested writer, an interested young writer who would mm. like to, and they don't know where to begin with, they don't yes. know what they're good at writing, mm. how can they go about discovering their niche? There's something we say, we say a niche is an area of specialization and it's, a, it's an area that you love because you have to write about what you're passionate about. You must love it because before somebody else loves it and before somebody else connects with it. So we use what we call a shape tool. A shape tool is an acronym. S is for spiritual giftings. So you begin to discover what, what has God given you. Is it training? Is it wisdom? And then there's the heart. What do you love? Is it cooking? Is it writing? Is it music? And then we have A, the abilities. Those are the skills that you've gained from school. Like for me, my skills are in um, IT. So I write a lot about technology. And then we have the P, the personality. Are you, are you melancholy? Are you phlegmatic? And then we have E, the experience. Our good and bad experiences uh, shape our writing. They actually help us to write. Because like for me, so I'm writing from my own experiences and giving people lessons of what I learned. So a writer can actually use the shape tool to discover what they want to write about. Yes. And we said that when writing, you need to write something that you're passionate about that will add value to people. Then once you do that, then people will be able to buy your work and you'll be able to earn from it. But you don't start writing for money. You start writing to be able to add value to people and then they can connect with your books. They can now buy your books. Yes. yes. Thank you for that. And Mr. Ogutu, you know, when you were talking earlier before, you talked about... Um, how you started writing in high school was it Jamuri High? Yes. Yes. <clears throat> Let's go back, um, maybe to your younger years, just a little bit. I'd like to know what what do you think that a writer is born or made? Because for you, that was in high school, school. and I can imagine mm -hmm. the people, maybe even younger than that, who started to write, or sometimes they start even at the age of fifty, sixty to write their first, very first book. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you think writers uh, are born? Uh, or made? I would say that um, writers are made from this aspect. The drive to write comes from experiences, especially personal experiences. Uh, my style of writing is telling stories, and I tell real life stories. Uh, there are a lot of things happening in the world that affect each and every one of us. Either a loss due to death, either something tragic in the family, and uh, writing is a way of healing or uh, relieving or um, helping others with your experience so that um, if they are going through the same, they know that they are not the only ones. Others have also gone through the same and they have over, overcome the problem. So writing is a way of expressing yourself. It gives you the freedom of, um, of communicating. Uh, you might be communicating on paper, but in reality you're actually talking to the, to the reader or the, 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 the target um, uh, audience. Uh, where uh, the writing is actually customized, it, it, it's not generalized. Yeah. So you actually write for a specific purpose, right. either to inform right. or to entertain. Mm -hmm. uh, my style is uh, to combine that. Tell stories in a way that they are platable. It might be something so serious, so sad, but put in a little bit of humor so that uh, people are not, uh, when you're already down, the story does not actually make you worse. Yeah, uh, so that way you are able to communicate. And people actually love it, uh, because when they go through the story, they go up, down, up, down, and then they wonder, oh, the story is ended. Yeah. Okay. And, um, you know, today is uh, Tuesday Entrepreneurship. We're going to discuss a little bit about the benefits, monetary benefits of writing towards the end. Uh, but for now, I'd like to ask Ms. Mrs. Tabitha, you know, um, in Kenya, I hear that people don't like to read very much. We're not very good readers. And if we're reading something, it's probably a newspaper or a magazine. Uh, how, could <laughs> how can we change that when it comes to Kenyans? How can we get Kenyans to start to love books again? Oh, by the way, Kenyans read. Uh, we know they read because we have many writing clubs coming up. 
Uh, we have, uh, like, we have initiatives like Story Moja who have reading events. We have also digital online stores. So Kenyans are reading. We need not to change uh, that and say that Kenyans, Kenyans, are, Kenyans are now reading. So there's no yeah. problem in that area. Yes, Kenyans are actually mm -hmm. reading. And that's why we even have bookshops. But to, and to be able to, though, though we are still not there, to be able to encourage them to read more, we, uh, we would especially want to encourage parents to begin encouraging their young children at an early age, even two, three years to begin reading, put, buy for them books, put them at strategic places. When they wake up in the morning, the first thing they should see is a book. Let them begin interacting with books at an early age, and then they will develop the love for reading instead of waking up and then watching television and cartoons. Mm -hmm. I think if we, if we begin from an early age, then it's going to be good for us as a generation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I do like what you have said, and actually, I, I hope to be a future parent, and I do not intend to have a television in my house mm -hmm. at yes. all. Yes. There will only be books. <laughs> Please do, feel free. Uh, there is a program that we've launched with the Writers Guild. Uh -huh. uh, it's an organization, another organization for young writers okay. that also mentor writers. And now we're actually partnering with primary schools mm -hmm. to start writing clubs. Writing clubs and with reading clubs schools. in primary schools. Ah. So we are starting with the study six, seven, mm -hmm. to just uh, create that reading culture. Because you cannot write if you don't read. That's true. So you start by reading mm -hmm. and then you start writing. So the students who will be involved in the cl club will uh, read the books and start writing uh, reviews or what they have learned from the storybooks that uh, we have already mm -hmm. donated. Mm -hmm. So we intend every school mm -hmm. that would have partnered with to have some form of library mm -hmm. where the students who are interested in uh, uh, improving their English, improving their writing, improving their grammar, they have a place that uh, they are comfortable, it is their environment, and they will be able to learn the reading and the writing. Yes. Yeah. And Ms. Tabitha Kihara, you know, in, in uh, Kenyan comm commemoration of World, a book, sorry, World Book Day, excuse yes, me, yes. Kenyan commemoration for it, I see that you're going to be speaking. Yes. Um, what is this event going to be covering? What does this event encompass exactly? What do we as Kenyans expect from this? Okay, today is a World Book Day. These are, these are, it's an annual event that is organized by the UNESCO and its aim is actually to encourage people to read, to publish books, to actually encourage reading culture in Kenya. So today we'll be meeting at the Bazaar Plaza at the American Space, it's on fifth floor. And we'll be having many writers talking about their journey of writing, the challenges they've gone through, the, we want to inspire upcoming writers to know that they can write, they can find their purpose through writing, and they can also earn from writing. Mm. Yes. Okay. Mm. Ah, I see. Um, well, you know, is there anything you would like to add before I ask my final question? Because mm. there are two things I would like to discuss. No, I would say that uh, writing is fun. Yes. And uh, our Nigerian brothers have actually they been ahead of us for quite some time. Mm. And uh, it's time to catch up to catch and up. tell our stories. Yes. Because we have enough stories, and we have yes. enough heroes. Yeah. Uh, within our setup, within our local setup, we have heroes who have solved the community problems. Mm. We have um, heroes that have mentored and provided direction to the youth to be useful right. to the society. Right. So we need to tell these stories, mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. And we can only tell these stories through writing, mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that. Um, lastly, just, just very quickly, if mm -hmm. you can cover this very shortly and quickly, because mm -hmm. we need to also leave a word behind for our youth, mm -hmm. and then we need to sign out. Kindly, I'd like to know, this is Tuesday Entrepreneurship. We do focus on this being a business also. Mm -hmm. yes. um, we have seen the benefits of writing and reading, but people, um, I guess we need to know <laughs> is this something that can put bread on our tables? Is this something that we can survive on if I decide to be a writer here in Kenya? Mm. Yes. Yes, okay. Writing, <laughs> writing, you can actually put bread on the table. Okay. We have people like uh, Oyugapala. He lives through writing. We have bloggers who live through writing. So you, 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 you don't necessarily need to publish a book, but writing and people if you write things that people love consuming, right. reading, okay. and connecting, okay. Okay, okay. and uh, once you have a fan base, 
they will continue consuming whatever you mm -hmm. you produce as so long as it connects with them okay. so look for your place and South. I see, I see, I see. Do you have the same yes, mind? Yes, yes. There are many opportunities, like in digital marketing. If you find your place, your niche, then you can begin writing for companies that are in your niche. You can, you can create websites, you can create blogs for people, you can write books. Opportunities are so many. You can hold conferences and get paid for it. Yeah, you can hold seminars. You can have online courses where you teach people how to write or whichever area that your niche is in. So the opportunities are many. Yes. Ah, thank you for that. And guys, remember that you can also always hashtag inter uh, Tuesday Entrepreneurship, hashtag why in the morning. And please, uh, how can they reach you if they're interested in reaching you? And then after that, kindly share a word to our youth to encourage them to read more and write more. I would want to invite them to our meeting today okay. at the Bazaar Plaza, it's American Space on 5th floor, that's on Moy Avenue. I would like to invite them to come for a meeting. They'll be able to network with other writers. And also, uh, they can find us on Facebook, Maple Brook Writers. Maple Brook Writers. Maple Brook Writers, okay. yes. Uh -huh. mm. yeah, How can me, they reach you and what would you like to say to them? They can reach me through Facebook, Vincent okay. Ogutu. Okay. Or they can reach me through my mobile, I can give it. If you're comfortable? Yes, 0722 uh -huh. 171 uh -huh. 838. Okay. 0722 uh -huh. 171 uh -huh. 838. Okay. Yeah. Right. We and are there say, to help. Thank you. Mm. Would you like to say a quick word to our youth to encourage them to read more, write more? Yeah, it's good to be youthful. Mm. And uh, being a youth at uh, this time in the world is actually a blessing. It is. It is a blessing because uh, first, the changes in technology, the access to information through the internet, uh, the access to smartphones mm. that actually brings the world to your phone. Mm -hmm. uh, now, what needs to change is our approach to life as yeah. young people. Okay. We need to start looking at what problems are the society experiencing and what can we do to change? Okay. Because that's how successful people have changed the world. Right. Yes. By making solutions to everyday Creating problems. Creating solutions, yes. Uh -huh. Creating solutions. Uh -huh. yes. Thank you so much for that. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, and just to, to add, mm -hmm. majority of the people who are successful started before they are 18 they were 18 years thank you for that yes. that's a perfect way to end this interview yeah. because i know a lot of viewers are around that age <laughs> i'd like for you to wow how i repeat it a lot of people who become successful started writing at below not actually just writing doing whatever anything. they did yes they, they started, started at, at below the age of 18. Mm. 14 16 mm. years Okay, yeah. so whatever age you are, if you're old, uh, younger than 18, that's the best time to start something. This is World Book Day. Please pick up a book and read something. And <laughs> thank you so much for tuning in. And thank you so much for coming to discuss um, the values of reading and writing. We do appreciate it. This is Why in the Morning. This is Y254 channel. Remember, you can um, watch us on DSTV channel 376. On YouTube, you can watch this interview again. And please subscribe to our channel. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Joy Muchacho once again.